very smart. One was called Sir Handel and the other Peter Sam. What a small shed, grumbled Sir Handel. This won't do at all. I think it's nice, said Peter Sam. Huh, grunted Sir Handel. What's that rubbish? Shush, shush, said Peter Sam. That's Scarlowe, the famous old engine. I'm sorry, Scarlowe, he whispered. Sir Handel's upset now, but he's quite nice, really. Scarlowe felt sorry for Peter Sam. No, Sir Handel, said the farmer next morning. We'll get you ready. I'm tired, he yawned. Let Peter Sam go. He'd love it. No, said the farmer. Owner's orders, you're first. Oh, well, said Sir Handel sulkily. I suppose I must. When his driver arrived, the handle puffed away to catch the coaches. Whatever next? He snorted. Those aren't coaches. They're cattle trucks. Ooh! Screamed Agnes, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima and Beatrice. What a horrid engine! Not what I'm used to, clanked Sir Handel rebelliously, making for the station. He rolled to the platform just as Gordon arrived. Hello, he said. Who are you? I'm Gordon. Who are you? I'm Sir Handel. Yes, I've heard of you. You're an express engine, I believe. So am I, but I'm used to bogey coaches, not these cattle trucks. Do you have bogey coaches? Oh, yes, I see you do. We must have a chat sometime. Sorry I can't stop. Must keep time, you know. And he puffed off, leaving Gordon at a loss for words. Come along! Come along, he puffed. Cattle trucks! Cattle trucks, grumbled the coaches. We'll pay him out. We'll pay him out. Presently they stopped at the station. The line curved here and began to climb. It was not very steep, but the day was misty and the rails were slippery. Hold back, whispered Agnes to Ruth. Hold back, whispered Ruth to Jemima. Hold back, whispered Jemima to Lucy. Hold back, whispered Lucy to Beatrice. And they giggled as the handle started and their couplings tightened. slipped on the greasy rails. Come on, come on, come on, come on! His wheels were spinning, but the coaches pulled him back, and the train stopped on the hill beyond the station. I can't do it! I can't do it! He grumbled. I'm used to sensible bogey coaches, not these bumpy cattle trucks. The guard came up. I think the coaches are up to something, he told the driver.
so they decided to bring the train down again to a level piece of line. It gives the handle a good start. The guard helped the farm and put sand on the rails, and Sir Handel made a tremendous effort. The coaches tried hard to drag him back, but he puffed and pulled so hard that they were soon over the top and away on their journey. controller was severe with Sir Handel that night. You are a troublesome engine, he said. You are rude, conceited and much too big for your wheels. Next time I shall punish you severely. Sir Handel was impressed and behaved well for several days. Then one morning he took the train to the top station. He was cross. It was Peter Sam's turn but the thin controller had made him go instead. We'll leave the coaches, said his driver, and fetch some trucks from the quarry. Trucks, snorted Sir Handel. Trucks. Yes, his driver repeated, trucks. Sir Handel jerked forward. I won't, he muttered. So there. He lurched, bumped and stopped. His driver and farman got out. Told you said Sir Handel, triumphantly. He had pushed the rails apart and settled down between them. They telephoned the thin controller. He came up at once with Peter Sam and brought some workmen in a truck. Then he and the farmer took Peter Sam home with the coaches, while the driver and workman put Sir Handel back on the rails. The handle did not feel so pleased with himself when he crawled home and found a thin controller waiting for him. You are a very naughty engine, he said sternly. You will stay in the shed till I can trust you to behave. 